Okay. Hi everyone. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me here. My name is Donny. I'm tech evangelist covering for ASEAN. So, and so, how many have uh, of you have watched Rainfan? The videos. Okay. That's it. Okay. So. Rainfan. So, um, how many of you have visited this page? Okay, so if you haven't watched the videos and you want to have a lot more about the RainFan updates, you can go to this page, awsamazon.com slash news slash RainFan. We already like compile every, every the announcements we announce during the RainFan. And we already categorize uh, into analytics and machine learning, everything. And you can find all the details over there. So, um, Today is quite challenging actually. Usually we go, we are having a recap for the duration will be like one hour to one and a half hours. So now we only have I only have like twenty to thirty minutes. So I'm going to like give the all the list of the updates and give the uh, high level quick overview of the most interesting uh, services that we announced during the rain event. So yeah. So, this is my stacks. I speak in Go and Python. Um, I'm film users for years before I met Sublime. Bullshit. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. And I'm Firefox user instead of Chrome. Recently? <laughs> no. How old are you? <laughs> um, Crawl is my friend. And my focus is more to AI, ML, serverless, and microservices. So if you have uh, questions about those three areas of focus, we can take it offline and you can like ask a question, ask many, uh, many questions that you want to have regarding the AI and ML services that we have. So next thing is, I'm going to show you the state of the cloud. This is the where AWS stands uh, now. We are currently, uh, we have the 44.1% and we are leading um, and we have the second leader will be the Microsoft. And this graph show you the AWS space of innovations. Okay, so during the rain event this year, we saw how builders compose their applications. And, and we, we builders in AWS, we want to serve you as well as the builders. For, so for the builders, we want to use all the tools, the instruments. We want to have freedom. We want to have like uh, how to get the data analytics. So all those messages have been like carved out by Andy Jesse. So, Andy Jesse says that everything is everything. He like, uh, when you're choosing a technology infrastructure, you don't want a fraction of the capabilities others have, you want everything. So this kind of message that uh, he sent during the rain van. And freedom, freedom is what we are looking for as a builder when it comes to database. So um, one example that shows this kind of um, statement is uh, reflected by Amazon Aurora is the fastest growing uh, products uh, in AWS. Because if you can see from the past, the many enterprises have been like penetrative licensing terms uh, towards the database. And we've done a lot in Amazon. Uh, we had a lot of tuning and customers want to move from property database to a more open source. That's why we announced Amazon Aurora. And then uh, no false hope. When building and inventing, you need to look for data or clues to ensure that you're on the right track. So, um, talking with customers is very helpful. But a more scalable mechanism to avoid false hope is to understand your customers and businesses through analytics. And the uh, Let It Rain, the, it's, it's, uh, this is what this one when it, when it comes to machine learning. As you know that we already announced SageMaker, I'm going to announce, uh, I'm going to have on the next slide. And 
this is the message, the, the last message that NDJC present, the waiting is the hardest part. We don't want to have a taking action slow when it comes to uh, process, data process. And this one is the my uh, favorite. What does the future look like? It's been like presented by uh, Werner Vogels. So the future of the computing, it will be that all the code you ever write is only your business logic. So let's start with the reinvent updates. The first one is compute. So we introduced a bunch of features during the reinvent. We have M5, we have H1, we have P3 instance type. So M5 is the new family for the EC2. It has the 40% price uh, and performance improvement with M5. And it's powered by new lightweight nitro hypervisor. Have you ever know about the nitro hypervisor? Okay. So nitro hypervisor is a, a new virtualization it's based on KVM core kernel model. So, but it's more lightweight and it's been powering our uh, compute instance from now to the upcoming uh, latest instance. And we have H1, the new dense storage instance family for big data. Uh, mostly we use for big data cluster, Kafka streaming, MapReduce, and we have P3, the NVIDIA, we have the NVIDIA Tesla V100 GPUs. So containers, so this is one that you already might already heard is we announced the Amazon uh, support for Amazon Elastic Container Service for Kubernetes. How many of you are playing Kubernetes? Nice, okay. Okay, few of you. So the survey, 63% um, users were already hosting Kubernetes on Amazon EC2. So this is one of the most popular uh, framework for uh, open source container management solution. And we have a lot of AWS customers who run Kubernetes on AWS. That's why we announced the uh, EKS. So EKS is fully competitive. Uh, and this one, and then EKS automatically run Kubernetes with multiple masters across multiple AZs. So um, with, if you run Kubernetes on EC2, it's kind of tough to have a highly availability to highly available um, Kubernetes and automated upgrades and patches. So this, if you're having this kind of uh, problem, you can use uh, EKS. And another thing, we also announced the AWS Fargate. Uh, run containers without managing servers or clusters. So this is a new technology for deploying and managing containers without uh, having to manage any of underlying infrastructures. So I had a lot of questions regarding this Fargate. To put it simply, Fargate is simply like, it's like easy to, but instead of you getting the uh, virtual machine, you get a container. With Fargate, this is diagram when you can see Fargate. So, Amazon ECS and EKS, they have two models. So Fargate is the underlying technology for Amazon ECS and EKS, and you can launch two types, Fargate launch type and EC2 launch type. So with Fargate, you can package your application in container. You just only specify the CPU and memory, and then you just launch your containers. And then we go to serverless. We have a bunch of updates for serverless. The first one is AWS Serverless Application Repository. And we have new AWS Lambda console. We have AWS Lambda per function concurrency controls. And finally, that we have uh, AWS Lambda Go Runtime and .NET. We have AWS Lambda Deploy for code deploy, traffic shifting, can releases, and private VPC integrations. This is quite interesting actually for the AWS Serverless Applicant Repository. So um, with AWS Serverless Applicant Repository, they, you can create your own Lambda and package it using the same model and push it to the Applicant Repository. So you can publish it over the cloud and with the public access. 
So, here you go. And the benefit of having AWS Serverless Application Repository is you can discover a collection of serverless applications and you can easily deploy to your AWS accounts and publish your own. And this is the, the new uh, screenshot of the uh, AWS Lambda console. Have you ever tried the new AWS Lambda console? Okay. What do you think, Kai? Uh, I don't like it how it's at the very bottom when you choose a trigger. Oh, you're having a problem to uh, scroll, scroll down. down. Oh, yeah, I understand. My screen's only... Sorry. No worries. <laughs> I hate change. You hate change, okay. So, another another thing is that we, uh, recently, that we have Cloud9 on board as well. And we have AWS Lambda Console with the Cloud9 integration. So... We are, uh, if you see on the screen, this is actually the integration of the Cloud9 and AWS Lambda console, so you can easily deploy your Lambda uh, functions. And this is the concurrency control. So, we're moving to database, analytics, storage, and app integration. At RainFan, we uh, announce the Amazon Aurora Multimaster, Aurora Serverless, DynamoDB Global Tables, Neptune, the Grave Database, and Amazon S3 Select and MQ. So the first one is uh, Aurora Multimaster. So this is a new feature for uh, Aurora MySQL Compatible Edition that you can scale out for read and write performance across multiple availability <laughs> zones. So you are you can have your applications to have a direct read and write workloads to multiple instances in the database cluster. And it can scale up database up to 15 replicas. And then we also announced the Aurora serverless. This is on-demand auto-scaling serverless database. Aurora Serverless is on-demand auto-scaling configuration for Aurora for MySQL compatible edition. So, database capacity, um, yeah, basically it's, it's like, like a dynamic workload that you can host for your uh, Aurora database. It's designed for application with infrequent, intermittent, or unpredictable workloads. And we have DynamoDB global tables a fully managed multi-master, multi-region database. So, what does it mean for you actually? Now your data is replicated across multiple regions and it's globally distributed. But, how about the backups? Okay. So, we also announced the features for DynamoDB, Backup and Restore. It's the the only cloud database to provide on-demand on continuous backups. So it processes backups requests regardless of the size of your tables. And we come to Amazon Neptune. It's a fully managed graph, graph database. It gives you flexibility by supporting both of Tinkerpop and RDF graph models. It's really fast and scalable. Um, and the most important thing about the Neptune is it enables 15 low latency read replicas allowing 100,000 uh, queries per second. So it's very, very fast and scalable. <coughs> Anyone of you already using uh, graph database? Sorry? Uh, well, Neo4j. That's, I was wondering, what are you basing this off like the, uh, the original product? Sorry, for the Neo4j. Yeah, yes, I, I'm a Neo4j user. But, uh, so what are you basing the Neptune off? Okay. So the Neptune is built using the uh, Tinkerpop and RDF graph nodes. Yes. So and you can use your Gremlin query with the Amazon Neptune. So the the one it's more standard than the Neo 4G. So yeah, and actually and uh, with the Amazon Neptune, the um, the features that I want to highlight is the the red replicas, and you can allow concurrency up to 100k uh, queries per second. With Neo4j, you need to like uh, to host your 
on premise and you need to host by yourself. Okay. And then we moving to storage and analytics. We have uh, we announced S3 Select. It's a uh, pow very powerful new S3 capability to pull out only the object data that you need. We uh, most of the our customers they use S3 for their data lake. And with S3 Select, that now you can like query any data that you need using like SQL standard SQL expressions, and it's 4.5 faster than without S3 Select. And we also announced Glacier Select. Okay, now so the next one is will be machine learning. Uh, this one is my favorite. Amazon SageMaker. So how many any of you are already playing with machine learning? Nice. Okay. Now you know if you, if you are playing with machine learning, the painful one is to have the workloads during the building and train the models. And not not to mention how to inference the all the data that you have. And Amazon SageMaker, sorry, Amazon SageMaker is a fully managed service that enables data scientists and developers to quickly, easily build, train, and deploy machine learning at scale. So, this one that we have a pre-built not a notebook for common problems. You can uh, build. We have a built-in high-performance algorithms that's on the build side. Yeah. And then we have a one-click training. You can actually select what kind of framework that you want to use. We have support for TensorFlow. We have support for Cafe. We have support for Keras. Or we have support for MXNet. And we have a pre-built notebooks for common problems. And it's so easy to uh, deploy. You only have to you only have to uh, click. Uh, and we have a fully managed hosting with auto scaling. So, when you say common problems, what do you mean by common problems? Okay. Okay. So the common problems that we already have a pre-built currently that just for example, how you want to build a recommendation engine with a few parameters that you already have, and you can like. You can like just give you the, the uh, you can train the data with the pre-built uh, notebooks. So it's most most like most common use case that you, uh, you have for the uh, machine learning, like recommending uh, recommendation engine. Like uh, we have the pre-built notebooks for like fraud detection. So most of the uh, common problems like that. Uh, Sorry. PyTorch. PyTorch. I'm not really sure about that. Let me check with it. Okay. Okay, okay but you, we're running out of time. Oh yeah, I know, I know, Okay. So, okay. Uh, and then we have the Amazon Kinesis video streams. Um, and we have the Amazon recognition video. Um, it's really really cool to have the. Uh, to have these two of, of the services that we're going to uh, can integrate easily integrate one to another. So this is one of the common use case. Imagine that you have a camera, you have the Raspberry Pi with your camera, or you have the a webcam. You can stream your uh, videos with the Kinesis video streams, and you can get the output and connect it with Amazon recognition video. We have the app with our machine learnings. And then for language service, we have Amazon Transcribe, Amazon Translate, and Amazon Comprehend. So Transcribe is like text to speech. I uh, sorry, speaks to, uh, speech to text. Uh, and then the Translate that uh, yeah you can easy, it, it, it's a translation API. And the Comprehend is to for sentiment analysis to get the to get the extract entities of the uh, uh, text that you want to uh, you want to upload. And then we have IoT. For IoT, we have we have a lot of features. We have IoT one click, we have IoT device management, and we have IoT device defender. Let me show you how we can use it. 
for the device management, it's um, imagine that you have a fleet of IoT device and you want to get them on board. So with device management, you can like manage any of your IoTs, uh, IoT device and you can update over the air. For the device defenders, this is how it looks like. You can easily connect with the IoT core and then you have device defender and then we have the device management. And we have uh, another uh, features. We have IoT analytics and uh, Amazon Free RTOS and AWS Greengrass ML inference. This is one I want to highlight that uh, for you who's running your machine learning application, that now you can run your inference by using uh, uh, IoT devices. So with the Greengrass ML inference, you can uh, inference your uh, machine learning inside your IoT device. So this is kind of new and this is kind of continuation of AWS Greengrass. And another surface we have AWS AppSync. Uh, this is our real-time collaborative mobile and web apps. We have the Amazon Sumerian. We have Alexa for business. And I would highly recommend for you to, um, to use the Amazon God DD. It's a fully managed continuous security monitoring and threat detection. Um, how many of you are already using AWS Messi? So I had a lot of questions as well regarding what's the difference between Amazon Messi and uh, Amazon God Duty. Amazon Messi is a uh, surface that uh, based on machine learning, uh, deep learning that can identify a possible loss of your personal, personal identifiable information. But with Amazon Guard Duty, it's the intelligent threat detection. So that's a big difference over there. And the last one, I probably might want to use this one, AWS Cloud9. Uh, it's a cloud idea for writing, writing, and debugging code. I already used Cloud9 before, but now because it's easily integrates with AWS, I'm going to use it a lot. And the, 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 the most benefit I could get from Cloud9 is to publish directly into Cloud Start Tools. That means I can have the AWS Cloud Pipeline, Cloud Deploy, Cloud Commit, Cloud Build using on the Cloud9 ID. Okay. Okay, that's quite a rush. Okay, thank you. Sure.